Hello and welcome back to the lab. As you know, I'm a big fan of vintage Hewlett Packard test equipment. And uh, here are two of my voltmeters, a 3456A and a 3455A. The 3455A is my favorite voltmeter. I use it every day in my home lab. Um, this instrument is actually 49 years old, almost half a century old, and it still operates as well today as it did the day it was manufactured. Um, the, the biggest problem we have with these old HP um, instruments is they have noisy fans. Noisy fans. Those noisy fans probably weren't an issue in an industrial setting or in a commercial lab environment, but here in my little home lab, they can make quite a racket. So something has to be done here. So I'm going to try to see if I can't replace the fan with something a little bit more silent. I'm going to concentrate on 3455A today, but uh, I have fans to replace uh, several instruments in my lab. Okay, so these are the fans that I purchased to, to replace the fans in my HP instruments. These are Noctua fans. They're 60 millimeters by 25 millimeters. They run on 12 volts DC. They draw 80 milliamps. So 12 times 80 is uh, 0.96 watts, just under a watt of power. Let's open it up. This is what they look like. That's their uh, characteristic brown and beige color scheme, which doesn't really go well with my HP equipment but it will uh, not really be seen it will be inside anyway so but um, this is I'm going to try these um, now these fans run at 12 volts DC of course and the HP meters that I want to replace the fans in they have a different power supply uh, scheme for their fans and let me show you what that is So here we're looking at the schematic of the HP 3455A digital voltmeter. And uh, this is the schematic for the motor driver for the fan motor. Um, it's a very complicated circuit. We have six transistors in sort of a ring oscillator configuration. So it actually pulses uh, the three separate phases of the motor windings um, with these pull down transistors to pull down the ground and a common uh, plus 12 volt feeds the the uh, the fourth terminal on the motor of the of the fan um, so it will pulse through pull down this phase then pull down this phase then pull down this phase so there's three alternating phases um, that cycle through to the 12 volts for the fan blower motor um, I don't know why they had such a complicated scheme to do this, but that's the way they did it back in the 1970s. So we're going to have to find a way to just bypass all of this and just use the plus 12 volts DC power supply um, because that's what this fan, this new fan requires. Um, now, in, in voltmeters such as the HP 3455, we have an out guard section and an in guard section, two separate sets of power supplies, right? The out guard section is all the digital logic and everything that connects to the front keyboard and the rear uh, panel. And that all those voltages are referenced to chassis ground or earth ground. That's the out guard section. The in guard section is inside the guard. And that is all the analog circuitry, all the measurement circuitry. And uh, uh, there's another controller in the in guard section. But these two sections are isolated from one another. The in guard section is floating relative to earth ground. So its low is just a common low, uh, uh, what they're calling it the in guard ground, but it is not referenced to earth ground. It is, is entirely floating. In fact, you can have up to 500 volts DC between earth ground or chassis ground and the low common terminal on the in the in guard section 
of the HP 3455. So we want to use the out guard power supply to drive our fan, not the in guard power supply, because we want our fan to be um, grounded at its low terminal, connected to the chassis, um, and not connected to any of the analog circuitry inside the voltmeter. So we're going to look for this plus 12 volts that drives the fan, and we're going to use that to drive our new fan. So I wanted to do a little uh, comparison test comparing the original HP fan with the new silent Noctua fan. Um, they're both 12-volt fans. Um, the HP fan, of course, has that crazy um, three-phase uh, driver circuit that's installed here as a separate module. Um, this fan actually came out of my HP 5328A frequency counter. And this is a brand new Noctua fan. Now, when I tried to record this segment using my wireless lapel microphone, I didn't hear any noise coming from either one because my wireless lapel microphone has a built-in um, automatic volume control and noise canceling feature, which uh, really canceled all the fan noise or almost all of it. So you couldn't really hear anything. So I have to make a segment without using the wireless lapel mic and uh, just using the internal mic in the camera. Um, so that will be the next segment. What I will do is I will power up the HP fan first and we'll listen to that for a few seconds. Then I'll turn that one off and I'll power up the silent Noctua fan and we'll listen to that one. And I'll do that a couple times and we'll use the built-in microphone that's in the camera and uh, we'll see if we can hear the difference in the the amplitude it's not a very um scientific test it's really sort of subjective but it's better than nothing and it may demonstrate that it's worth putting in an octua fan which i hope is going to be the case so that that segment is coming up next Okay, so I've taken my voltmeter down off the shelf and turned it sideways. Um, it's unplugged. Please unplug your equipment before working on it so you don't get zapped. Um, and I want to loosen the one screw in the back, the top cover, with your uh, posi drive screwdriver. Right? Once that's loosened up, the top cover can be easily removed. And there is the circuitry in our HP3455. All right. So we take a quick look. The, uh, the aluminum shield here is called the guard shield. Uh, everything inside of this aluminum shield is called the in-guard circuitry. That includes the in-guard power supply and all the analog circuitry, all the measurement circuitry of this voltmeter or inside this guard shield. Outside of the shield is the out guard circuitry, and that is the controller circuit, um, out guard power supplies, and uh, all the, the interface that goes to the front panel, as well as the main processor unit. Um, there is a link that goes between the in guard and the out guard for co data communication. And there is also the circuitry that powers the fan. So here's our fan. And uh, all of this stuff that's kind of hidden down here is those, um, those six ring oscillator transistors that drive the three phases of the fan. And here's the fan motor. We have four wires going into our fan on the original fan. We have brown, red, yellow, orange. 
one, two, four, three. I don't know why they couldn't put them in the correct order, but that's the order they're supposed to be in. Okay, so, and that goes to this little Molex connector that plugs into the out guard board on, on this side back here. Um, we're not going to use any of those driver transistor circuits. We're just going to tap the 12 volts DC directly off this Molex connector and uh, power our fan that way. All we have on our replacement fan is two two wires, um, a power and the ground, and that's it. Plus 12 volts DC. So that's what we're going to do. Now, working from the back of the instrument, I removed the two acorn nuts and their associated washers that hold the uh, fan filter in place and remove the fan filter. And then I can remove the mounting hardware that mounts the fan to the rear chassis of the instrument. Um, two of the screws come in from the back and two from the inside. And I had to remove the bottom cover as well, the one screw in the back at the bottom, in order to get the two bottom screws out of the fan. Um, but there it is. One noisy fan. Euler Products, Inc. Kingston, North Carolina. Made in USA. Well, it served its purpose for about 50 years. Now it's time to move on. Now I wanted to be able to reuse this four pin Molex connector um, with the new fan. Of course, we'll only need two wires, one for 12 volts and one for ground. So I took another look at the schematic. Let's see if I can get my phone to focus. All right, here we go. Um, we see 12 volts comes in through the orange wire. So I'll use the orange wire supply my plus 12 volts and I decided that um, I could use this brown wire number one as a ground if I remove Q2 uh, from the circuit board and place a jumper from its collector to its emitter that will ground this pin one this brown wire so the two wires that we'll use will be the orange wire for plus 12 volts and the brown wire for ground. And that will supply continuous power to the fan whenever the power is turned on. And here you can see where I removed Q2 and placed right there, placed a jumper between the collector and the emitter points where Q2 used to be. And that will provide a ground connection through the uh, brown wire on the Molex four pin connector. Now these fans come pre-wired with a three wire cable, uh, red for plus 12 volts, black for ground and yellow, which is a sense wire, which is not used in this application. It's pre-wired with a three pin connector on the other end of the cable, which I just simply cut off and attached my uh, original uh, Molex plug to the red and black wires plus 12 volts is the red wire on the on the fan cable and it's it's orange wire on the molex connector the ground wire is black on the fan cable and it's brown wire on the molex connector now one thing you should be aware of is that these noctua fans are 25 millimeters in depth whereas the original fan over here is only 20 millimeters in depth it's five millimeters thicker and that means it's a very very tight squeeze down in here there's actually no room to spare whatsoever and in fact i had to loosen up the screws that hold this main board in place and push it ever so slightly toward the front of the instrument and retighten those screws in order to give me enough clearance to get the fan to squeeze in there um, that was one compromise I would have to make. Um, we may have to do something different to make that work more smoothly, but it seems like it's working. Um, so now let's plug it in and see if it's going to blow.
<laughs> Moment of truth. Here goes. Well, the instrument works. And the fan is blowing. But I don't hear it. <laughs> it's completely silent. Wow, that's a tremendous improvement. And it seems like the airflow is pretty much the same as it was before, only completely silent. Wow, I would say that's a success. Wow, these fans are great. Um, hashtag not sponsored, by the way. Um, I paid full price for this fan. Um, they're not um, paying me to advertise their products. But uh, I would recommend this fan. It's a very, very good replacement for this instrument. Now I buttoned it all back up, put it back on the shelf, and turned it on. And can you hear that? Neither can I. In the 50 years that this instrument has been running, it's never sounded so quiet. I am very impressed. These fans are really something. Um, now I have two other fans to put in two of my other instruments. Um, and I'm probably not going to make a video on those. But uh, I would recommend this fan as a great replacement for your vintage HP equipment. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And stay tuned for the next video. Thanks again.